We've learned a lot during these past few months working with refugees from all over the world um, on this project, trying to establish um, what set of values they are coming with, what their expectations and needs are, and understanding also what their perception is of our Western world and our Western lifestyles. And that gives you such an interesting mm. outside view on your own culture. Ich heiße Christopher Derdix und ich bin ein Research Associate. Wie heißt das? Ich weiß nicht. <laughs> and I work at the Center for Applied Second Language Studies um, as a research associate working on um, a software project teaching German. And my Spanish is about as bad as my German. <laughs> Ich bin Catherine, my name is Catherine, and I'm an instructional designer at Castles. And I work on the same software project that Christopher is working on. Uh, basically, the project is about a more large scale solution for refugees learning languages, and it includes a lot of cultural background information and pragmatic skill sets that we're focusing on and that has been an incredible journey so far. I got into linguistics because there was no alternative. There were many things that I could have been doing but I could not not do linguistics. What I like about linguistics so much is how language gives you the opportunity to understand more about how people think. It's like a window to our cognition. And I got more and more into the applied side of linguistics, trying to look through that window. And that has been a lot of fun so far. And in this project, uh, I've had a lot of opportunity to understand more about the, the difficulties that are um, posed by different languages that people speak in terms of communicating. We have enough communication difficulties speaking the same language, but then if um, it's an intercultural communication, it's a completely different set of difficulties because anything you could potentially take for granted or as common ground doesn't exist anymore. There's no common ground. And the first time I had this realization, it kind of swept me off my feet. About five years ago, I took a big trip uh, and traveled for a year and studied German, studied Spanish, um, just kind of in the wild and tried to um, make sense of the world in a really practical way. I had already done um, some, some academic work and I found that being out in the world and, and practicing my language skills and talking with people, um, it provided a kind of profound insight into the human experience that I, um, I hadn't been able to get in the classroom. And uh, so when I got home from that trip, um, I spent a bunch of time processing, like, why was this so profound? Why was this... Um, this traveling experience, this language learning experience, so profound, and I got some answers, but in the end I had to uh, go back to school and I got another master's in language teaching and really focused on um, that aspect, how, how uh, language influences our experience of the world. And um, yeah, right, right from that program, then I got hired into this job. You would think that Catherine being a native German speaker or an expert German speaker and me uh, being functional but it's not very pretty, that she would have an advantage um, negotiating um, the encounters that we were having there in Germany, collecting information from our, our target users, from these refugees. But actually, my um, more basic, more elementary language skills, this is a big surprise, it actually was easier for me to communicate with the refugees in German than it was for Catherine. It facilitated a lot because yeah. um, I saw Christopher communicate using hands and feet and a lot of gestures which um, 
helped the refugees, I think, to identify in a way because they were doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, so I think it can be actually helpful yeah. if you meet on the same on the same level. We always have the assumption that when we speak a foreign language, it has to be just perfect, and it takes us a very long time before we start speaking. Because we are we are ashamed of all the mistakes we might be making. People might be laughing at it. That's hardly ever the case. I mean, people might be laughing because it's in, incredibly um, endearing. Um, but I think that's a positive reason. And it, it was really encouraging to see how Christopher actually managed to facilitate a lot of communication and, and back and forth mm -hmm. um, with very little language material needed. A lot of communication happens actually in between the lines and you can find some common ground there then mm -hmm. again. Yeah. One of my big goals was to actually build relationships with the people I was working with rather than just kind of go in and get the information and run but to to spend time, to spend time socializing and really interacting and um, building up my own kind of capacity for empathy and just really, really understanding what their experience was like to the best of my ability. The closeness that was generated allowed them to even say more often, like, no, this is, not, this is not a good way to go. You should look at it from this standpoint instead. You have some assumptions. So even being able to be challenged um, uh, by, by our users. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, that that shaded all of the information that I was able to collect and then bring back to the curriculum team. rare that you get the opportunity to to act in this in a space between academia mm. and the real world <laughs> yeah and um, this this gives some very good drive and um, focus to the work because you know what you're doing it for yeah and um, it helps to it helps to frame your work in a, in a really great way um, because the questions you ask are more targeted. It's like, who is this for? Who is this good for? Mm -hmm. And this has been very refreshing to actually be able to, to do academic research, but then apply it and, and try and get it out there and try, it, try to form it into something very, very helpful that, that can make a difference in the daily lives of others. Mm -hmm. That's a great experience. One of the things that's really inspiring to me as I'm seeing the curriculum um, unfold is uh, that we're not, we're not just making lists of words that people should memorize that are really kind of abstract and decontextualized, but it's, it's really powerful to me to see this curriculum uh, that's targeted for a really specific group. Um, people who have recently come to mm -hmm. Germany, they have this very specific refugee experience where there's trauma involved and, and a lot of kind of cultural confusion and, and our, our curriculum is tailored to address the, the things about their experience that are causing friction and confusion and frustration and so um, yeah that's definitely the hope that the, that the product we give them at the end that that would be something that would tremendously impact how they're able to interact with um, with other Germans and participate in the culture and just kind of go about their daily lives. Mm -hmm.